hands on Legos kept me building all day. Hey fans and trolls, uh, my name's Romney. Today I'm going to be giving you a little bit of the behind the scenes of how we shot this video. The one you saw before. If you haven't seen it, check out the previous video. And today I'll show you kind of how we made it look the way we did with the limited equipment that we have. So take a look over here. Um, we set up the printer. This is a Zortrax M200 printer um, on this little plastic board in the bottom. It's just textured like that. Um, this would normally go over like lighting panels or whatnot in the home. And then I have this pegboard. Also, I just picked up at a hardware store. Gave it kind of a metallic paint. And that's what you see as the backdrop in the video. And then what I did is I took uh, these lighting stands. So it's two lighting stands from my own little kit. And I drilled a hole in this piece of wood and just put a piece of wood across the top of those two lighting tripods. And I put just some white cardstock on the back. These are about 30 cents each, the cardstock. Just put two of those and some green masking tape. And the reason I did that, I'll show you, if you look down here, um, I wanted to get a soft white reflection on the top of the printer. So I have a light behind the printer that's hidden, and then that reflects off of this. Normally you'd use like an 8x8 muslin or some sort of reflector um, to get that look, but I just used cardstock because that's what I have. And then a little light from behind um, to give that kind of look. And then I wrapped the light on the side so I didn't get spill light coming off and reflecting off the plastic. Um, then I shot this on my own camera. It's a Canon 7D. This is DSLR camera. Um, I used mostly the fixed 50 lens. So it's a 50 millimeter um, 1.8 f-stop. So you get that shallow depth of field. And then I also used just for a couple shots the zoom lens. It's a 75 to 300. So on another time lapse, and for a lot of the time lapse, I use this Tokina 11 to 16. It's one of my favorites. It goes to a 2.8 f-stop for a super wide angle on the crop sensor. So that's that. And then some people have asked about like this, the smooth kind of tracking shots that I got. And I'll show you how I got these with this little piece of equipment. Um, I built this, I got this slider piece off of Amazon and then I built this um, slider just from I don't know a few parts I put together I got this servo motor and modified it so it's a continuous rotation servo it was originally a 60 degree but I've modified it to uh, continuous and then I got this servo controller that will allow it to go back and forth or stop and you can take it even a slow pace like this or speed it up with this controller. So that's just a little do-it-yourself project that I did on my own and that has turned out really well for getting that smooth cinematic look. Um, I shot it, shot the video at uh, 60 frames per second so I could take that down to slow motion if I wanted to get nice and smooth and stabilize it a little bit in post if I needed to. Um, I ended up only stabilizing one shot though everything else was how you saw it. So that's just a quick little behind the scenes of how we did this and how we got that printer to look the way it did. Um, there's one other, I guess I'll tell you two other things that I did for this. In order to get that kind of those shines that we got across the Zor tracks, you know, with the light coming across Zor tracks or coming down the side here, um, that may look like kind of a special effect. I just kind of held my phone actually and took my phone across that to get that shine coming across the Zor tracks or to or these details down here. And the way I did the time lapse was I am using a magic lantern hack. It's just a firmware for the Canon 7D that allows me to take multiple photos and then bring them into Final Cut later and create a time lapse over two or three hours. Um, so that's how I did that. If you take a look over here, I just want to show you kind of where we are today. Um, this is the shop that we're putting together so we'll be able to do you know woods projects or prototyping projects that we're going to be working on also with the 3D printer. Um, we've done some framing, put up some sheetrock, and we're starting to uh, make it look really good with some cedar, getting that aromatic smell in here. It's starting to smell really good. So anyway, and then just finally, I wanted to show you what we printed last time, which was this gimbal done by Dee's Maker. He's the designer. We wanted to let you know who designed it and show you kind of how you pull each print off the printer. So you take one of these spatulas and just kind of work your way underneath the print 
you can start this one's kind of cold usually it'll come off a little easier than this but basically you just pull the print off and then coolest part about this is this little raft underneath peels right off and this gimbal is fully functional right from the beginning so both of these will spin pretty cool little print by D's maker and we'll be doing lots more projects lots more prints just follow us to see what we're doing. We're doing also a box opening of the Zortrax Sprint if you want to see how it is right out of the box. So, see you next time.